Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Fresh Perspectives. My name is Geoffrey Tobias. I'm the Managing Director of the Strategy Group and with me today is Johnny Ugotnes, Chief Digital and Innovation Officer at Bolton Clark. Welcome Johnny. Thank you. Um, we've worked closely at the Strategy Group with Bolton Clark over a number of years uh, on a number of different initiatives, starting off with the innovation journey and working through what innovation means to Bolton Clark interviewing large numbers of people, implementing idea to execution platforms, and really looking to work with you to build Bolton Clark's innovation story and innovation journey and innovation processes for the benefit of the organization. Today, we're going to discuss something a little different. We're going to discuss Bolton Clark's venture into the startup space. And I'm really interested to discuss with you, Johnny, you know, why, where that's come from, why that's of interest, and where that's going moving forward. So, first of all, tell me a little bit about Bolton Clark. Tell me a bit about yourself and your position. Uh, and then we'll move into a discussion of wh why startups for Bolton Clark. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, so, from my perspective, I'm the Digital and Innovation Officer. I look after the traditional IT parts of the organisation. IT security, uh, all the things with blinking lights on them, but also, as well as that, I've got a, um, just from my perspective, I, I look after the portfolio work that we do, change and transformation, and then lastly, innovation, which is of interest to us today. And what I do in this space is, in, in transformation, we try and make the organization better. In innovation, we try and find external ideas and, or internal ideas on how we can improve what we do. The internal ideas is what you referred to at the beginning of this conversation where we run ideas, ideas to execution campaigns and we take internal ideas and we try and come, make them come to life for our staff or our customers. The focus of our external view, which is what we're looking at today, is bringing an external IP into the organization in a manner that improves the lives of, of the elderly. The organization, Bolton Clark, is Australia's largest not-for-profit aged care provider. We touch about 130,000 people every year in terms of providing care to them. Some of them in our residential facilities, some in our retirement villages, and a large number of people in their own homes. That's that's the. And you've had a number of acquisitions recently. I think. We have, so we've grown very substantially in the last few years. In the last couple of years, we've grown from about six and a half to fifteen and a half thousand staff. So it's been a very large journey of growth and a very large journey of integration of these organisations. There's been three organisations added to the group. Yeah, amazing, amazing! Congratulations on that. It's Thank fantastic. You. So, where did this interest in startups come from? We ran our own internal ideas campaigns and we got a lot of good IP, a lot of good ideas and they are incremental improvements generally. They are those small innovations that make life better for either our staff or our customers. We then looked for uh, or started talking about how can we move the needle, how can we come up with innovations that actually change or solve one of the fundamental problems within aged care and uh, those were not readily apparent in our ideas campaigns. One of the things we thought as an, uh, as an idea was to go out and look and see whether or not startups had ideas that would work. Whether or not they focused on aged care wasn't so important as whether or not they had good solutions that we could tune into aged care. I mean, it's interesting to me that, and we've been working with you for a number of uh, months now on this, on this startup venture, but it's interesting to me to think of an organisation in aged care, pretty conservative, pretty traditional, Things have moved generally in the industry slowly, you know, nothing's happened too rapidly. And then you've got startups, high risk, rapid growth, rapid decision making. How do these how do these cultures come together? We're we're a very conservative organization traditionally. We are also in a heavily regulated market. So there are things where we have room to move and uh, there are areas where we have room to move and there are areas where we don't have room to move. There are things we have to meet, so compliance regulations from the government. Those aren't open to debate. So those areas are, this is how we work. There's a threshold. We don't aim to hit the threshold. We aim to exceed it. But even so, we have to meet those needs. And, and, and innovation in those spaces is how can we do that more efficiently and better to tuning and incremental improvements. There are also new solutions we can deploy out there in the market and in those spaces, from my manager, the CEO, and the board, we've been given the guidance that we want to be, we want to be innovative, we want to go out and find new solutions, we want to go out and see how we can do things better for our clients. How can we better help them live their lives of fulfillment, which is our vision for the organization. 
And that's where this comes from is in the areas which aren't heavily regulated, can we make a difference and how can we best make a difference? And that's where we look at it and say these are opp there are opportunities here. But also we can help, in, in some cases we can augment what we do with technology. So we can, as an example, use technology to point our nurses or personal care workers at the most important things to check when they go see one of our clients. So it's, it's, that doesn't mean that we do the work for them. We just give them some pointers as to matters of interest. Have we got a passive sensor in the home that looks for a temperature and does a flag that this person is running a little slight fever? That means that in, in which case we can flag to the nurse when you go and see them, check out what that fever might be caused of and maybe recommend they go to the doctor. But it's the nurse who goes and does that. They do that anyway. So all we're doing is pointing them in the right direction so they get there quicker. So give me a picture of the startup journey today. Where, where have you been? I, I know I know because we've been working with you, but let's talk about where you've been, where you think we are, and where you think you'd like to take this. Where have we been? We've been scouring the market for opportunities. We've been looking for startups who solve problems that exist in aged care. So we've looked at around 40 of them so far and, and run them through an evaluation set of criteria and we've, we've dropped them into buckets of, no, we don't want to continue with these, maybe, we'll keep this on a short list and review again, and a small number of, yes, we want to proceed with these. And so where we're at right now is we've got a few, we are engaging with them, and what we're looking at is taking the board as well on the journey of what does it mean to invest in startups or early stage companies. They don't just have to be pure play startups, they can also be early stage in terms of the, the, the small and, and growing but need some help and also can benefit from the IP that Bolton Clark has. The journey with the board is to make sure they understand that this is not about the growth we've done before which is very simple in, in terms of its quantifying it is buying land and facilities which have asset value. It's, it's a very explicit value, you can measure it and you can see what the operational value of we own the asset, what can we do in the asset to generate further value, i.e. operate a residential aged care facility or a retirement village. These are very different to that. We, we have to take the board on the journey of understanding that in early stage, they don't have necessarily have much revenue, if any. They've got prospects and opportunities, and when you buy in, you buy into an uncertain world of risk. There's a bit of financial risk in the investment you make and there's a, a larger to our organization reputational risk of if it goes wrong, there's a blowback and cause bad um, impressions on our name, which is something we really don't want. But that's, they, they can be mitigated. We operate in an environment of risk all the time. We, we look after vulnerable people. We have clinical risks throughout the organization. It's not new to our board managing risk, but they just want to understand that. And once they understand those risks, they see that we mitigated them and they accept that there are potential losses, but the opportunities that present themselves are greater than the potential losses. That's hopefully where we'll get to, and we will get to the point where we do place real investments and build real partnerships with these startups. In the journey that you've been on so far, have you found anything surprising? Not so much surprising, but quite a few positives. We find, thing, we find innovative solutions to problems. We find some that are at a point where they're just about ready to pop and we think yeah, this, this is very positive and they do solve some intractable problems like social isolation is one, a big one. In aged care the, the elderly often get socially isolated and we have a few opportunities to go and help with that and also build out around that other opportunities to, to solve problems on the same platforms that we, we're looking at. So if we could just build on that, I'm, I'm keen maybe you could give us, without naming specifics, but a bit of a sense of some of the startups and some of the areas where you found that they could be of value and of interest to Bolton Clark? There's a range of them. And we found, the small number that we found that we're, we're looking to, to go into more detail with, solve things like social isolation, or give us better visibility of the data that we can collect passively in the home. So part of what we're trying to do today is, and we have a large number of sensors in people's homes, but they go into stovepipe solutions. So we're now looking at how can we make them more general? How can we collect that data in a manner that we can combine it with multiple data sources, multiple sensor solutions, and come up with real insights. Do they have an early stage infection of some sort like a pneumonia? Is their false risk increased? And if so, if we believe so from the sensor data, as I said before, we can prompt the nurses, go and check this out. We recommend that you do a false assessment, but you can do your own view and, and tell us what that is. 
when the nurse then tells us what they found in the outcome, we can use that to learn and improve upon the solutions that we've got. In social isolation, it's, it's really about connecting our customers with either their friends and family directly or networks of volunteers. That's, that's what it comes down to and how we could help solve some of these problems. So, Johnny, you mentioned Bon Clark's a very large organisation. Now, couldn't, couldn't you do all this yourself? We can. What we get out of this and being a, a part of Mestre is we help shape startups. We don't just do it for ourselves. We don't just lift and improve the lives of our customers, but we help the HK market. So what we do is we look at it as for the benefit of Australians, and we're not the only player in the market. And much as we're a very large organization, we have 4% of the market. So if we come up with one of these solutions and we bootstrap it and lift it and get it to a point where it's valuable, it will not just be valuable to us, it will be valuable to anyone. And if, we're, if we look at this as being a part of Mester and, and helping them both with the investment side and the IP side to build it out for aged care, it should be generally applicable to the entire industry, which is also another driver for us to make sure that it, it spreads across both Australia and internationally if there are solutions suitable for that. So what does success look like? Let's say you invest in one or two startups over the next six to 12 months. Three, four years out, what does success look like? For me, the, the, the key measure is that we improve the lives of Australians, meeting our, our vision, which in turn meets and aligns with our strategic values. Secondarily to that, it's this financial return on this. For the organisation, we put money in, we put IP in, and in, in four to six years' time, these companies may go public, float, whatever it might be, then we get the money back that we invested with interest and significant uplifts. And if you look at only one in a small number of startups succeed. We believe we pick some that have, are likely to succeed because we can see the applicability and the fact that we would want to use them as a customer ourselves. And we believe if we want to use these to solve problems for customers, then other organizations will as well. So we believe there's a high chance of success, but even, even if not, we would like to spread our bets on a number of different opportunities and get those financial returns back, as well as being able to say we've, we're helping people. Are you looking to buy these startups? No, we're looking to invest in them. Minority why, why, not? why wouldn't you buy them? I wouldn't buy them because what we really want to do is to leave those energetic, enthusiastic founders in place. They've got the ideas and the drive and they want to build this up. We want to be a part of that. But if we take the majority investment, they lose a lot of their incentive to, be, to remain invested and to build this business. So for us, it's important that it's a small stake apart stake in the organization more so than buying them out, much as we probably could in many cases, it then means that it becomes part of a large conservative organization as opposed to being a small, innovative, energetic startup. So we want to be part of that energetic startup story, but we, we don't believe that we can run that internally ourselves in the organization we have. So investing in startups normally a win-win from both sides. So what's the advantage to the founders or the startup to have you as an investor? The simple one is the cash, secondarily the IP that we bring to the organization. We have a lot of uh, technical know-how on running large systems for a large national organization which they can benefit from, but more, even more importantly than that, we really understand the problems Australians face. So we, we know whether or not they're solving a, a deep problem, a genuine problem in the, in the industry, and then we can help them on how to best solve that for a larger organization like ours. And if they can meet our needs, they'll meet most of Australia's edge care organization's needs. That IP that we can put in around both the customer and the how to engage with larger organizations is, is very valuable to these startups. <coughs> it's something that often they're quite naive about. What does it mean to engage with large enterprise, of which we are one? They think, well, we can just sell this in. It's not quite that simple. There's a range of things you need to arrange. They're not hard, but one, and once you know them, it's a formula you can follow. And so that's the guidance we can give them. But also, we, we can also easily give them access to our customers if we have confidence in the solution, to run experiments with them. So one of the things we do in our innovation process is run experiments. And, and we're getting quite good at establishing small groups of people with whom we can run the experiments and get real feedback from real customers as to how well or not it works. And we can take those lessons that we learn and tune the solution based on that. And also the same thing with the experiments. They cover things as well like billing and um, financial returns. And for us, how well does it, how easy is it to provision for us as a, as a large organization? Can we just push a button and it goes? Or do we need to do a lot of steps and work? And can we automate those steps with the startup in question? Would you like to take a board position in the startups? Yes, we're looking to uh, be influential on them and, and be a part of their journey through influential positions. Is, in that, is that because you're concerned about their process or what? what why Visibility and being able to track them. But we're looking at engaging with them at multiple levels, um, not just as a board, 
member, whether it's a shareholder of some sort, whether it's a startup pre-listing uh, or post-listing. That's where that's where a shareholder uh, that gives us another level of visibility. But then also we will engage with them technically at the executive level and as a customer of theirs. So and we kind of engage with them at all levels of the organization. So it's a really deep engagement with those startups that we pick. So it's not, we don't want to go broad and have hundreds of these in the model that we're looking at now because we want to go deep with each one of the ones we do. So we want to make sure we pick a short list of them and go in, in low double digits as opposed to in the anywhere near the triple digits. Would you be happy to co-invest with, say, a venture capital fund or other players? Absolutely, if that's the appropriate way to go forward and to get the sums required. Yes, and generally, we would whether we explicitly co-invest with a partner or not isn't so important as, as the fact that uh, there's, a, there's a number of players investing in any of these already. We want to be a minority investor, so we are part of the investment group regardless. So if you look at the spectrum of startups, it's from you know, people, a couple of people who've got an idea and... They've formulated something, but they haven't got any traction yet. Through to what you call scale-ups, where there's you know significant traction, and they're looking for funds to to really accelerate their growth. Is there preference in that spectrum that you're looking at, or, or anywhere in that spectrum? Anywhere for us, and it's it's not so important where they're up to as that it meets our internal criteria for investments. And and for us, it's is that purpose part. That there is a potential financial return on there and that they solve a real problem. And that's really what we're looking at is, do you solve a real problem? That's the purpose part. What, what do you think, what do you know, what's the, what's the board's position in investing in high-risk ventures? Evolving. Evolving. Uh, evolving and growing. And look, we are, I'm working with them to highlight the risks and opportunities of this. And they're very positive to, to innovation and they just want to understand that not exposing Morton Clark unnecessarily to unwarranted risks. I believe that their position is, is, is evolving in, in, in a manner that means that we are going to become part of the investment horizon or investment collective in Australia for this. But that, that will all be set this calendar year, really, as to how that will go. I mean, it's, it's pretty refreshing, really, because, you know, in our experience... Most large organisations don't understand startups, and in many instances, startups don't understand large organisations. They understand, you know, raising capital from angel investors or venture capital groups, but not necessarily partnering and working closely with a potential investor. Do you think you're breaking new ground here for the aged care space? I certainly feel I am. Yes, I haven't heard of others doing uh, it this way. If there is, I'd be keen to know, but yeah, I'm, I haven't seen anyone doing it. And I believe we're breaking new ground. And certainly for our board, we're breaking new ground, and they're very enthusiastic about that. It's fantastic. I mean, it really is. I mean, you know, the opportunity to bring that IP into the organisation in a rapid way and do something with it, in, you know, in a much shorter time frame than normal is fantastic. So can I ask you, three years out, what does the landscape look like? Three years from now, I would love to be set in an investment in around about a half a dozen companies and that we would help those to grow and that the first ones we invested in are starting to come to fruition. They're starting to really explode in the market and then we're looking at uh, the next wave of investments that we can undertake. Excellent. So should startups listening to this contact you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, how do they do that? They can do so via the strategy group or on the Bowman Clark website and get in touch with us there and, and send their emails through and we can post my email address if you want on this as well. Okay, fantastic. Johnny, a fantastic discussion. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on taking the initiative. Congratulations for driving this process forward in a non-traditional way. 